Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and here today to do just a little bit of a vlog, talk about a few things, Titanfall, and some real world stuff as well. I'm playing a bit of catch up, trying to get back on track with the stuff that I wanted to release last week when I got sick, so just playing a lot of Titanfall 2. Uh, unfortunately, not able to make a lot of complex content for it just yet. I'm hoping to get my Padawan pilot load out early next week. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a fun little bit of a challenge video for you guys that's going to include another Titanfall YouTuber, something that Iniquity and myself and all of the other Titanfall YouTubers talked about a couple weeks ago. I figured I'd finally go ahead and, and fire a challenge into the air for one of them, so keep an eye out for that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. But today, I want to talk about, uh, number one, Field of View in Titanfall 2. But before we get to that, I should uh, let you guys know, just quickly remind you, that I am going to be pushing the Community Challenge back yet another week. So you've got one more week to get those Titan Teamwork clips in. If you're still unaware of what I'm talking about, well, the Titan Teamwork video is on screen right now. You click that little card annotation in the top right corner. It'll take you to that video. Watch the video. You'll learn how to submit your clip and get those Titan Teamwork clips in. You've got one more week. So let's talk Titanfall 2 field of view it's become very apparent to me that a large portion of the community most of you who probably play on xbox one or on playstation 4 don't really understand the benefits of increasing your field of view beyond the default field of view i had about 60 clips submitted for last week's community challenge or the previous community challenge i think maybe five or six of those clips were running a modified field of view Many of them were at 70, the default view of the view. There was no doubt about that. So I think for the most part, people who play on console, they're just not really aware of field of view sliders because they don't typically exist in first person shooters on the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4. It's become uh, sort of a recent thing for developers to give us access to FO view sliders, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing. So I want to talk a little bit today about why you should consider increasing your field of view at least beyond the default of 70. Now, there's a couple things that happen when you start to bump your field of view up. You are technically zooming your view outward to put more of the game world on screen. That's what increasing your field of view is. Now, as humans, we have our own maximum field of view, our own maximum peripheral vision. It is that it is very high. It's much higher than what we get inside of video games. So video games tend to further limit us by downplaying our in-game field of view, putting it at something like 70. That cuts off a lot of your peripheral vision in-game, narrowing your view, and in many times, really decreasing your situational awareness. It makes it much more difficult, much more challenging to see someone who's about to engage you from the left or from the right. And when you're looking out into uh, large expanses or looking out across the opens of a map, maybe you're on a rooftop like Angel City, looking across the city itself, if you're on 70, well, you're seeing a lot less of that city than you would be if your field of view was on, say, 90 or 100. So I'm gonna ask you all, to do yourself a huge favor and to bump your FOV up. Now, I would recommend starting with 90 to 95. That's a pretty good number because one of the things you do have to remember, as I said earlier, is that you are technically zooming out your view. So it can be a little bit more difficult to identify targets depending on your own personal vision, the size of your screen, and a whole bunch of other factors. But I find 90 to 95 to be a pretty good sweet spot where you're boosting that situational awareness, you're getting that increase to your peripheral vision, and you're not doing too much in terms of zooming out your view to make it difficult to aim at a distance. Now, nothing else changes when you modify your field of view. You're not changing your point of aim. You're not going to affect your recoil compensation. You're just looking for the opportunity to boost your situational awareness, to increase your peripheral vision at the cost of some zoom level. That's all I can really say. I'm going to talk a little bit more about field of view with an upcoming situational awareness video, but I just wanted to get this PSA out for it. Again, I think it's something that not a lot of people really consider. They don't know about it or they haven't decided to tango with it for one reason or another, but I just just trust me on this one. There are huge benefits. There are huge rewards to be reaped if you look to increase your field of view. So start at 90, 95. If you want to go beyond that, you can go up to 110. You should take note that more complex maps like Colony and Angel City, you are going to see a bit of a FPS decrease on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One side of things uh, when you start to increase your field of view, which is why I recommend staying uh, pretty much a 100, 90 to 100 is really where I would mess around with. That's going to keep your FPS relatively high and consistent in those more complex environments, but it's also going to let you get the most out of that increased situational awareness and peripheral vision. 
So there you have it, guys. Do yourself a huge favor. Go check that out. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit on a personal note today. I wanted to talk about my personal health, specifically my weight loss, because this is something that I've been working on very hard since uh, late January. It's actually something that started back in December of last year. My brother and I finally finished putting together our gym in our basement. It's a very nice gym we've thrown together. We're pretty proud of it. And it's come together very nicely. So him and I were focusing a lot on weight training, but I was never really happy with my weight was. Uh, there was a point in time when I was at a much, much better weight. I was probably sitting at around 210, 220, and I was a hell of a lot leaner than I am now. But that was a long, long time ago, back in my days of high school. After high school, I spent a lot of time riding a bicycle. Of course, life gets busier, right? You know, and it becomes harder as a human uh, to find time to take care of yourself, you tend to make more excuses. I think that we always have time. You know, even as somebody who works a full-time job and then spends all this time on YouTube, I know that I have time to work out an hour here, work out an hour there, or get on my bicycle. But laziness is a, it's a very uh, powerful human trait. <laughs> One that is not always easily dealt with. So I set out on a, a bigger goal, which was to not just focus on getting on my bicycle and, you know, working on exercise here and there but was to really just focus on what I needed to do to start to lose weight, to drop the pounds, to shed the pounds. And I knew that for me, it was going to be all about caloric intake. I'm not someone who eats unhealthy. Uh, I have a very healthy diet. I always have. I didn't grow up in a house where we consume a lot of candy and pop and chips and junk food. We don't eat out a lot. That's like a once a month thing with my family. Uh, you know, we cook a lot of home cooked meals with real food, and we're just very cautious about the foods that we eat. But the thing is, you can eat healthy and still gain weight. You know, there's that big misconception. Well, if I eat all these fruits and vegetables, I'll never gain a pound. And that's just not true. At the end of the day, weight loss has everything to do with your caloric intake. It's about reaching a caloric deficit. You know, uh, you have to, of course, look at your your exercise. How many calories do I burn a day? For someone like me who's not very active on a regular basis, I spend a lot of time at work, standing around, walking around. And then I come home and I spend even more time sitting around playing games and making content for games. I knew that I was going to have to really cut on my calories. So I started focusing on my macronutrients. I started with a relatively lower carb diet and I started eating under 2000 calories. And as I've been losing weight, I've been dropping that because, of course, as I get smaller, my body needs less energy, less calories to function. And I'm very proud to say that I started at 261.2 pounds January 21st. We are now here today in... April going into May, uh, April 21st, and I hit an all-time new low this week of 234.3 pounds. So that's over 25 pounds lost uh, in about 90 days. I'm just really proud of that. It was something I wanted to share, uh, I think, to really, not just because I'm proud of it, you know, it's a personal goal, but really to maybe get some of you guys jump-started. I'm not here to tell anybody how they should live their life or what they need to do to take care of themselves. I think at the end of the day, we all know what we should be doing to be healthy. And we all know if we're being lazy or if we're putting in the work uh, to take care of ourselves or, you know, whether it's at our day job or whether it's a personal endeavor, we all know where we sit. Uh, I'm just maybe getting some of you guys to be a little bit more transparent with yourself, a little bit more honest with yourself and recognize that there is always time, that it's always a possibility to get back on track with your personal health. You know, and when we talk about video games as a hobby, and I think humans today in general, you know, we consume a lot of entertainment. A lot of that entertainment is consumed uh, through very complacent means. You know, we're sitting around, we're watching movies, we're watching films, we're watching TV shows, we're playing video games. None of these activities are technically healthy. They don't burn calories. You know, they're not going to help you shed them pounds. They're not going to help you uh, boost your stamina and deal with your cardio and your heart strength. So I think it is important every now and then to just kind of poke everyone and say, hey, you know, we all love playing video games. I love playing video games too. But it's important that we put aside that free time each and every day to be concerned with our personal health. I don't know about you guys, but life already seems pretty short. Even if I live to be 100, that's really not a long time. I'd like to play a hell of a lot more video games, and I'd like to see a hell of a lot more things happen with the human race. So I want to live as long as I possibly can. I don't want to die 20 or 30 years before I needed to because I got lazy about my personal health. So, again, just... Maybe something to kickstart some of you guys into getting back on track with your personal health, your personal condition. And, you know, I think it's important that we all remember that happiness can sometimes be directly tied to personal health. I know that I've been much happier since I've started to lose this weight. Um, I feel better. It's easier for me to get out and exercise because I've, I'm 30 pounds lighter practically. 
you know, I'm working out in the gym and I'm, I'm able to lift more weight. I'm able to start working on that muscle growth. I'm start, I'm able to see those results from muscle growth much more clearly now because there's less fat on my body. So um, it's made me a much happier person. It's definitely been an injection of just goodness into my life. And I think it can be for a lot of you guys. So you guys know how I like to get very real world with my channel. So I think this video fits just fine along the dozens of others of accidental real world lessons I've I've spit out here while talking about Titanfall 2 and other video games. So there you have it, guys. Just something to think about. Some very deep food for thought this weekend. Again, consider what I said about the field of view slider for Titanfall 2. If you're somebody who is sitting there at default field of view, ramp it up to 90, 95, mess around with a bit, get a feel for it, maybe go higher than that if you find yourself really liking it. Um, I know for some people it can cause nausea, so you really have to find what works best for you. But there are benefits to boosting that FOV. You just have to find the spot that works best for you. If you have any stories you'd like to share in regards to your own personal health, uh, success stories, you find yourself in a situation, you want to talk about it, I'm always more than willing to interact with people about those sorts of things. If you need to ask any questions about field of view, you're still confused about something, something doesn't make sense to you, feel free to throw it down in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, remember to play smart, remember to play to challenge yourself, but most importantly, remember to play for fun.